So welcome back, everybody. We're continuing with our series on topics in Breslau and topics of Rebbe Nachman that we can use in our everyday lives. And we want to talk to you not only about the ideas from an intellectual standpoint, but how to actually live them and apply them. And when we chose today's topic, we uh, talked about it and we decided on this idea of um, taking a fall, taking a spiritual fall, what it looks like to make a Eureka, a descent. And Rebbe Nachman addresses this from so many different perspectives, and he has so many lessons on it. We're not going to be able to cover all of them today, but I'd like to begin with this idea of making, of having a Eureka for the sake of the Aliyah having a descent for the sake of the ascent. And how I visualize this is when you make a jump or a leap from a standing position, you can go so far. But when you back up far and you then run from that further place or farther place, you're going to be able to jump much farther. And this can be the case spiritually. Sometimes we have to go low in order to go high. Why this is, there are many reasons. Um, and one of them is simply that when we get ready to go to that next level, the Yetzirah, okay, the, the negative inclination attacks and pushes us. And that's really our signal. Oh, I'm having a spiritual fall. That's my signal to, to, um, to know that I'm ready to get to that next level. Right. To keep in mind that you're going to make that advancement because when we make advancements, people tend to think that, you know, the advancement's going to be smooth without any um, ridges or rough road or, you know, it's going to be clean, clear, crisp, easy, but it's yeah. not always the case, you know. So most of the time you're going to make those advancements, but coupled with that is going to be some of the your readers, the, the, the going down in order to make those advances to go up. Now, you could be at the very gates of holiness right at the gates and the, and the Sotna and Yesahora wants to keep you from, from making that advancement. So they're going to throw everything at you, you know, every confusion, every doubt, every sexual fantasy, revenge fantasy, taiva, anything that you ever experienced before will all come back to you. And you're going to think, did I really make, where am I? Am I, did I, am I advancing or am I going backwards? So, so it's important to keep in mind that, you know, everything that we're doing to get us to that point, um, in terms of uh, making sure that we're keeping our mind focused on why we're having that that fall is very important. Um, yeah. So, so I I think that I want to add something to what you said about the Sutton and the Yetzahara, the the um, adversary, the spiritual adversary, and the evil inclination sort of attacking us. Right. And one of the things to also keep in mind is that everything is in the service of Hashem. Okay, there's no separate force or separate energy. So when we say these energies are sort of attacking us and they're pushing us down and they're pushing us to fail and to fall, really they are there in the service of Hashem. And because of that, what they're really doing is, they're, is they are sending us a lot of obstacles in order to increase our yearning to come closer to Hashem. So whenever we encounter an obstacle to spiritual advancement or to holiness, and it might be a material obstacle, but in this case, we're speaking about more of a, a uh -huh. spiritual obstacle, know that that obstacle is there to actually increase your desire to overcome it in order that you should go up to the next level. Yeah, and the main thing in line with that is don't become discouraged. It's very easy to become yeah. discouraged and say, you know, why is this happening? I, I'm I'm not a great sadic, you know, I'm not anybody great. I have a regular soul like everybody else. You have a human being. Why should I have to go through this? You know, it's too much for me. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do any more commandments. I don't want to do any more mitzvahs. I don't want to learn. I don't want to go to shul. So people then start to go backwards and they and they fail to understand the lesson that Hashem is trying to give us that we're going to move forward and we just need to, you know, double down and 
and take a look at what we need to do. And one of the things we can do when we're in that situation, we're experiencing those clippers or negative energies that are being put back into our life, is that we can give sadaka, we can give charity. Charity is also another way to reduce some of the some of the impact of that. Um, so, so it's very important to understand not to become discouraged, to stay hopeful, and to continue to do mitzvahs, and just don't pay any attention to the fall. That's really what it is. Okay, so you yeah. said two things there that I'd like to say. So the first sure. thing you mentioned was to give tzedakah. Right. So tzedakah can pierce through and break through and sweeten harsh judgments and can open things up for us. So can uh, prayer. So can hipotadut, talking to Hashem in your own words about whatever is on your mind and in your heart. And um, that's very important those are a couple of right. ways to break through, to pierce through. And you mentioned something else, which was, I think, to um, not, not pay attention, to not allow yourself to get discouraged. Right. The other, that's also something that the Rebbe says is to just not give your mental energy to that fall. And, you know, I, I think, I think what would be helpful maybe is if you and maybe I, we took, turns describing what we do, what a spiritual fall looks like and what we do personally to get out of it. Do you, do you want me to go first? Should you want to go first? You can go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I was hoping you'd say, You're you not me. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say you would go first. So, okay. So when I, when I have a spiritual fall and I have it all the time, Sometimes they're little ones, sometimes they're much bigger, sometimes they're brief, sometimes they're long. Um, and they can look like many things. They can look like doubts. They can look like depression. They can look like uh, laziness. It, it runs the gamut like everybody else. So when I have a spiritual fall, um, hopefully I recognize it. Usually I do because I've worked on recognizing it. And what I, what I generally do is um, I generally like to uh, make people to do about the full, to talk to Hashem about what is going on with me. And I find that that helps me because I ask Hashem for help. I feel like I can't get out of this myself. I need Hashem's help. And I also, I like to read inspirational books, um, uh, especially biographies. I find when I read biographies of the tzaddikim, of all our holy men and women throughout Jewish history, I find that that really lifts me up as well. Right. You mentioned giving tzedakah, and um, I never actually, I don't know that I actually gave tzedakah in this particular context, but I think I'm going to try it in the future. What do you do? How do you handle it? Well, you know, I do like to use um, looking at form that I like to like to Look read at, 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 books. Yeah, at books, you know, so so certainly when I pick up a book, I'll say to Hashem, Hashem, please, in this book, help me find some understanding or answer as to what I'm experiencing and what I'm going through. Right. Because we're all going through these clippers, every single human being. We're all going through these falls, which can be very confusing and uh, can can kind of like startle you and stifle you and stop your growth. And cause you to give up, which you know you really we really have to be very careful. I have to be very careful of that. That um, that we're careful and we attend to what we need to do to move ourselves out of it. But but that's you know look, looking doing his this for myself. Also, that's something I talk. I have self talk. I talk to myself and say, you know, everything is from the Abishur, Everything is from Hashem. If I'm experiencing this, it's got to be good because Hashem only does good. And so that helps me work through some of the uh, negative uh, components of what I might be experiencing. Because I know Hashem loves me and loves every Jew, and wants us wants only good for us. Wants only good for me. And so I find that very consoling. And then I begin to understand that, you know, it may, helps me accept it better. Because if you don't have an, an understanding of that, what Hashem is doing, you think it's a haphazard type of thing happening to you, but it's not. It's from it's from Hashem to help you grow. Your, your spiritual fall is from Hashem? No, my spiritual fall is my spiritual fall. You know, that's that that's my responsibility to take to take uh responsibility for that and to try to work through it by understanding the um, remedies that Hashem gave us so that we can make, we can work ourselves through it and begin to make advancements. Oh, okay. So I thought you, yeah. right. Yeah. It sounded yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so you look at books. So I know I always see you with Lukatemaran, me too. So that would be one. Yeah, Lakute Moran, Chayim Moran, Lakute Halakos, Lakute Tefillos. Okay, so um, a whole range, a whole of, range of Breslau books. books. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. you mentioned Lakute Tefillos in English, the 50th Gate, which Breslau Research Institute has an updated um, uh, volume, uh, updated edition of this, which is absolutely fantastic. And it's all the prayers of Reb Nassin that... Um, that correspond to lessons of Rebbe Nachman's and Lukate Maran. And it's really, that also is like my go-to prayer right. book when I'm right. feeling stuck. And you also mentioned Heat Boat of Dute, and you also mentioned talking to yourself, right? which I think is really good. So it's like giving yourself that uh, self-talk, that, right. that self-encouragement. Dialogue. You have a dialogue with yourself, you know, and in private, of course. Well, I sometimes know. see you talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I never answer myself back. Though. That's the thing. That's what makes it different. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I I think there's one more thing that probably we should say. It's um, two more things. The first is, I mean, listen, this topic of having a spiritual fall. There are other lessons on it. Um, most significantly, IA is a very famous lesson on it. I mean, there are many more. We'll get to them in the future, hopefully. But I think one of the things is is this idea of being happy. And I know that I always see you, no matter what's going on, you always like push yourself to have a smile on your face, <laughs> to laugh, to tell a joke, to be silly. And um, that's important too, because if you're depressed, it's very hard to rectify things when you're depressed. Right. And yes, we should cry out to Hashem when we're suffering. Absolutely. But it's also important to really push ourselves to be joyful no matter what. We have to do what we call the hishtaldis. We have to do the action steps that are necessary to get us there. The Rebbe said like this, he says, you should force yourself to be happy. You know, you should, you know, if you want to be happy, then, then just be happy. You know, if you don't want to be happy, you won't be happy. So it's a very simple formula. And it's, it's hard to do. It's hard to do, but it's a simple formula. Maybe we'll talk about that another yeah. time, like yeah. about depression and happiness. I think right. that's a good right. topic to speak about. Right. But if you're having a spiritual flaw, you feel like you're in a spiritual slump, don't beat yourself up. We gave you some suggestions about right. things you can do to lift yourself out of it. Believe you can get out of your spiritual flow. Turn to Hashem. Ask him for help. Talk to a good friend. Maybe a good friend is there for you that can help sure. you. Pick up a book, a Breslov book or another book that inspires you. Make Hippo to do it. And I'm going to end, as always, with the importance of making Hippo to do it. Talking to Hashem in your own words about whatever is on your mind and in your heart. Anything is good because Hashem is your very best friend in the world who knows you intimately. He knows every detail about you and he still loves you and he still wants to hear from you. And that conversation you have with Hashem can, in truth, I think. And, really he, and he believes that, that both me, my wife, and all of you are his only son and daughter. They're, on, they're the only son. Hashem looks at you like you're his only son or, or, only, his, daughter. or only daughter. So he has that much love and compassion for us and, and loves us so much. So we should never be blinded by what we're going through because Hashem is there. And everything can be transformed into the greatest advance if you're able to see this through to, you know, working it through and, and uh, being able to come out of it in a way that's productive for you. So make sure you talk to Hashem. Yeah. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll end today. I guess today. we'll end today. You know, we look forward to uh, continuing this conversation soon in the future. Okay. See Thanks you for soon, having everyone. us. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye.